The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the November 2nd, the uh, yeah, terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. And today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't get to the phone, you can always send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question, of course, in our tiger's den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. Right now, a mixed bag out here. Not that mixed. You got the Dow up 150, the S&P about 20, the Nasdaq 60, the semi, the Russell's off five. Semis are up 33. Tranny's 958 points. That was up like 1,700 points, I think, earlier in the day. Um, big move out there. Six percent still to the upside. Uh, gold is. Uh, What's gold doing? It's on six bucks, trading at 1789. Silver off 58 cents. That's the big silver busting through a key level of support at the bottom of its daily profile. We'll take a look at that, I'm sure, during the show. Light sweet crude off 46 pennies, trading out at 8359. Leading the charge to the upside. How about uh, Avis Budget Group? Right now it's up 95%. It was up, I don't know, a couple hundred percent or so early. Went from 332 to about 550 or 600, somewhere around there. Right, uh, not 332, almost from a buck, uh, about a buck 60 to 560. I mean, it's just insane stuff out there. But in any event, uh, that's trading higher. MicroStrategy also up 92 bucks or 12 percent. Arista Networks 20 percent, 82 bucks. Rogers Corp 62, 30 percent. Man, there's some big movers. Shakers as well. The Shakers is surge pays. Apparently doesn't pay that well. It's off 93 percent, down 46 bucks. That is a stinger because that means it closed last night at about 49 or 50 bucks. Right now, it's trading at three. Ooh. Tesla. Off forty seven dollars, trained eleven sixty, booking holdings down forty three, similar scientific off twenty seven percent. So there are forty six percent to the downside for IDEX laboratories. My goodness, we have some movers and some shakers. We do have one question that's in. Let's get to this real quickly, now we'll go to the general markets out here. Uh, this one from David in Tomball, Texas. Whoop. Uh, and David wants to take a look at TRTN. TRTN. Let's get to his question. Happy Taco Tuesday. All you beat. You beat Hector and the fuel injectors on that one. So back at you. You're looking for a buy point in uh, Triton International. Again, that's TRTN, folks, if you're following along at home. Time, uh, this is a shipping container company that engaged in the acquisition, leasing, releasing, and sale of various types of intermodal containers to shipping lines and freight companies. Thanks for your analysis. No problem. Let's go take a look at it. So here's what we know right now. Price above all profiles. Uh, you're up at a uh, new all-time high. You made a new all-time high earlier in the day, and that was up at the 63.67 level. So what David really wants to know is, do we see any kind of a topping signal out here? And if so, where might price pull back to? So let's start with the daily time frame. The daily time frame chart would show nothing just yet, but there is an A to B equals CD pattern. Let's go back to the uh, daily time frame, the black background charts, I should say, and we'll show you that uh, pattern out here. So the one that I'm looking at, the A to B equals CD pattern, 
begins with the low on the trading day of September 20th. The B point out here that I would use is the high from October 15th, a one-day retracement into the low on the following session. That was the 18th. And now you can see that price has attained more than the one-to-one -one level. So price might be targeting might be targeting the 6407 area. The reason I bring this to your attention here, David, is that what you're looking for in the A to B equals CD pattern is some type of bearish reversal candle as price approaches those price projection target areas, the 1, the 1.272 expansion, 1.618 expansion, and we don't have that just yet. What we do know is this has got a strong momentum move to the upside because there was a TD9 count top that lasted for one single day. Then it was taken out with a wide-ranging bar. But if we do get a top here, what price should do at that stage is pull back and test that oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 60.15. I'm not saying 60.15 is the entry price because we need to get a top first out here. And we really don't have that signal as we speak just yet. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. So the pattern you're looking for there is some type of bearish reversal candle and then a move back to the oscillator and change line. Again, currently printed at 60.16. The weekly time frame chart out here looks good. Yeah, it's triggered a Rose Mintum indicator signal, but that would require a bearish reversal candle. That's not in the cards as we speak, so this suggests that it wants to move higher. That's the weekly chart. The monthly chart also triggered a Rose Mintum indicator signal, but price uh, looks like, uh, did it do it last month? The high that I'm looking at for its TD9 count top was at 61.88. The close last month was 62.19. It has negated that pattern. You can see the large A to B equals CD pattern that is out here as well but so david i think what you're going to have to do i know what you're going to well you can either trade this as a momentum move i don't think you're that type of trader out there but maybe you are uh and instead wait for the top to form right now the only signal that i see would be a sell the d point we don't have that just yet and then let's look at the pullback towards the oscillator and change line and some type of bottoming signal on the short-term time frame chart such as a 30 minute now we take a look at the 30 minute chart here you've got a td9 count top that forms and even though we see the TD9 count bottom, it's not a valid signal because the low is not on bars 8, 9, or the bar following 9 out there. That doesn't mean that it can't bottom because all price was really doing was pulling back on a 30-minute chart to its TD9 breakout level. So this would be another. So if you're an aggressive type trader, David, and you're looking uh, to enter this route, then what you'd want to do is look at those breakout levels on your short-term time frame chart. So that was 61.97 on the uh, daily at about 10 o'clock this morning. It got down to 62.06. That's really not too uh, shabby out there. 65-minute chart, as I take a look at it, it's got a topping signal support at 61.80 out there. I think just be patient. Just be patient. So the intraday charts are showing some topping signals, no levels of support that have broken out there, but I would just be patient. So let's not belabor Triton International, TRTN. That was for David in Tomball, Texas. Now, no other questions I've got in the queue just yet. So let's go take a look at the general markets as best as we can. What do you mean as best as we can? Well, everything, well, here, let's start by taking a look at this set of charts. The yellow lines, those represented the TD9 threshold resistance levels. Once you close above those, negates the pattern, says we're moving higher. And, the, and so that occurred yesterday. The, the last holdouts were the Dow and the Russell 2000. They did that yesterday. In fact, the Russell 2000 broke above the top of its uh, consolidation. So the question is, if this is a true breakout here, and there's no reason for us at this stage of the game to think that there's not, we do have to have caution, always have caution out here. But as we take a look at where is price likely headed, well, if we just look at the consolidation measured move price objectives inside the ES Mini, that would take us to the 4823 area. Just call it 4830. Inside the NQ, the NASDAQ, you're looking at 16928. Let's just call it 16950. The Dow. 37,365, let's call it 37,500 and 25, we'll call it 80 inside the Russell 2000. But the Russell's got a close above 23,5750. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, 
is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Denver and speak with Ron. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Hey, you doing? Thank you for taking the call. Sure. I was just wondering if I could, uh, if you had any comments about the Russell 2000 and the IWM. Uh, I was thinking maybe if there's a time or when to either sell calls or buy puts. I just wondered what your thoughts were and what my danger zone would be if I did that. Sure. So let's just take a look at the IWM first. We'll go take a look at the uh, we'll take a look at the equity future contract. Uh, I'll actually start with the equity future contract because it was the last thing that I said as we went into the break. And that last thing was that what the uh, Russell 2000 equity future contract needs to do is close above 23.5750. So 23.5750 run is the high that takes us back to give me the trading date here momentarily uh, March 15, 2021. And that's the only resistance level, in essence, that is left out here. If, in fact, the Russell can do that, then the signal, as long as it's a real breakout, and there's nothing to indicate that it's not, would be signaling to us that it would, over time, make a move to the 2578 level. So that's the Russell 2000. If we go take a look at the IWM out here, we're going to see something uh, similar. And what I mean by that is if we look at the weekly top of its profile, Ron, that's at 233.64. We're at 233.75. So it needs to close above 233.64 on Friday to suggest a uh, confirmed breakout to the upside. Well, at 234.53, that's the top of the monthly profile. And so even though we've just begun the month, <clears throat> the real resistance zone here is in that 234.53 area. Any questions so far about what we've taken a look at? No, no, it sounds very clear and okay. coherent, what you're saying. Okay, perfect. So now let's take a um, look at the... Yeah, give, give okay, well, I was just... Is, uh, so I should just wait to see if they can uh, get to those resistance levels and get over that or not. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I think... When, would you, here, so when would you say, well, it's time to get in? It looks like it's not going to get above that. 
Well, I, I, you know, I, I, I wish I had that answer for you, and I know you'd like, I know you'd like me to give you that answer, but, but, uh, but you know, I have to be realistic. I don't. Um, so, and it's a great question, and so there are a couple things in the market right now that give us pause, and and so let's just take a look at that. All right, and so you can see what I'm. Let's see, it's about the only thing that I've really been able to uh, find out here, and that is that. Whoops, not here. That is that. Even though the spot volatilities is trading a little bit lower today, it still has a rising bottoms pattern. That is the very bottom right that we're taking a look at, and uh, and that always says caution. You can see other time periods where I've identified those in the very bottom of the chart. Now, what I want you to know is that. Any kind of retracement or pullback is relatively muted with this pattern until the spot volatility closes above the 50-day expense moving average. Currently, that's pricing at 1799. But this is the only chart out here that gives us pause. If we take a look at the history behind it, there's there's reason for that. So that's the first thing. Let me uh, let me take you over to another set of charts out here. This is the other piece of the puzzle that is a bit. Concerning only from the standpoint of uh, that we should see a pullback. So I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to do is help you and others understand that if we do see a pullback, that that would be normal at this stage here, and that don't get too caught up on the short side. In fact, look at it as possibly being a buying opportunity. And here's what I mean by that. So I'm going to change screens for us. We're going to go over to my white background charts. We're going to take a look at the four daily equity future contracts out here. So, Ron, when this oscillator on change line changes color, so in this case here, I'm looking at the ES mini. In fact, I'm just going to expand out the chart. That way we're only looking at one, one uh, tool out here or one instrument. When it changes from red to green, that tells us, tells me, that the price oscillator is right at zero. Now, typically when that happens, over the coming sessions, we see price in that level meet each other. That has not unfolded just yet. Granted, it's gone on for now about two and a half weeks out here, um, but I'm still expecting that we will see that move. The question is, when, when does that happen? I don't have a signal that's ready to happen as we speak right now, but that's the caution side. So I would expect that if the uh, New York Stock Exchange, that rising price oscillator, is going to take hold out here, we should see some kind of retracement back to, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and put this so we can see all four equity future contracts. We have the exact same pattern inside the NQ, that's the upper right, and uh, the Dow really in the lower left. The Russell 2000 is a world of its own. So we really should see that kind of a pullback around, and if price pulls back there, tests and rejects that line, that's the time to uh, get in. Somebody in the den said, who's putting new money to work at highs for long-term, immediate-term trading? Well, I would respond by, if we get price to pull back to those levels, that's a level of support, then everybody should be putting long-term money to work again on the move up. And the reason is, is because we are in the favorable seasonal cycle that runs through the uh, beginning or the end of January, and we have a consolidation measured move breakout that's going on that takes us back to the first set of charts that we uh, took a look at well as soon as i get there this and so so that's what uh, so so to summarize it ron i don't have any clear identifiable topping pattern out here but we should see price pull back to those oscillator and change lines the only chart out there that is suggesting that might happen is the uh, rising spot volatility rising bottoms in the spot volatility index so i think you just have to be patient um if you're looking does that did I, yeah did that I, clears up a lot so you're if you if you did see some you see a pullback but you don't see a catastrophic drop there's not a signal that i've got out here right now to suggest that In fact it's really just the opposite now if you take a look at this set of charts that we're taking a look at the dow in the lower left once you break above a consolidation the ideal pattern uh, and this was taught to us by Bud Rolfs way back when. The ideal pattern is price would come back and retest the top of the consolidation that broke out. Well, the Dow did that, and the uh, ES Mini, that's the upper right-hand chart. We haven't gotten that move inside the NQ. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. I don't know. We're actually getting that kind of move inside the Russell 2000 today. So the, the slight pullback that we've had is really to retest the top of that consolidation area. But still, it needs to close above 2357 50 out there so um i mean i like to be you know have conviction behind what it is that i say when i do say it um but it's that set of four charts that we looked at the change in color in the oscillator and change line if we do see a pullback 
it, it should not be a surprise to anybody that's listening. And that, and what I am saying, though, that maybe would be a surprise to people, that is not the end of this move. Okay. That is not the end of this move to the move to, to the upset. Great. Okay. Great. Thank you again for your comments. Sure, sure, appreciate it. You bet, Ron. Always uh, good to uh, speak to you. Thanks so much for calling in, and uh, and uh, and uh, we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. Okay. That thank was, you. Bye. You bet. That was Ron in uh, Denver, and so that really kind of helped us. So his call really kind of helped to take a look at the overview out there. Now, if we go take a look at each of the equity future contracts here. For example, here's the ES Mini. You can see that you've got breakout city because price is above the top of all of the profiles. Now, when I say all, I'm speaking daily, weekly, monthly, and uh, quarterly. And when we get some other kind of signal changes out here, then we will change our tune. Uh, but not until then. So a key level for everybody to watch, for example, in the ES Mini, should we get some type of pullback, 45.63 was the oscillator and change line. 4590 is the top of the daily profile. But if price gets back to that 4563 area, or really whatever the oscillator and change line is printing at that time, if there's a test of rejection in the favorable seasonal cycle that says move to the upside. Steve Rhodes with TFNN will be back in just a few minutes. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. A little bit 
enter Satish inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at the Jazz Pharmaceuticals. J A Z Z is the uh, ticker symbol. Now I love the uh, I love that uh, uh, the uh, the ticker symbol because uh, back in the day, my early days, the 18, 19, 20, 21 uh, time frame, I had a license plate. There was this radio station in um, in the Detroit area called W J Z Z. I believe that was it, and uh, and I loved uh, I love jazz, still do. And um, so my license plate was Jazzy and the number one out there. So I've always liked jazz pharmaceuticals. But what's interesting here is uh, several weeks back, maybe two, three, four weeks back, I got some nice uh, bottoming signals inside of MJ, the alternative harvest uh, for the uh, pot stocks out there. So we went ahead and took a long position. in it. I had not looked at the details of uh, MJ for quite some time. And I was, uh, and when it wasn't behaving, uh, that was MJ, when it wasn't behaving the way that um, uh, that I thought it should, because I was taking a look at a couple of the actual pot stocks, like uh, Aurora Cannabis and, and, and something else out there. So I went and actually looked at all of the uh, current instruments that were in there. And lo and behold, there is a lot of stuff. Yeah, you know the other word that I was going to use. There's a lot of stuff that you've got to really stretch yourself to say that it is related to uh, pot stocks. Now, unless Jazz Pharmaceuticals has just gone all pot crazy, which I don't believe that it has, it's one of the stocks that are in uh, uh, MJ. So I, I made that mistake. And, and uh, what I did, I, I went back and took a look at all the instruments uh, inside there, put them up on the screen and said, this is not an instrument for us to be involved with. That was MJ. So we closed out that position a very small loss out there, but it's really important. The reason I just simply share this, it really is important to understand inside those ETFs, especially a smaller one like MJ, as to what's going on and what instruments they might be adding uh, into this. So Jazz Pharmaceuticals happens to be a part of it. But back to Satish's question, which is where is there an entry point? So as we take a look at Jazz here, a couple things that we don't like. Price is below the bottom of its daily bullish structured profile. Did that about a week ago. That area is resistant, so 136.70. Forget about a buy point right now. We'll get to that, or we'll try to get to that. But we know that there's resistance at 136.70 to 139.55. It could close above 139.55, back on its way to 146.66. That's not the message right now, but those would be the levels to be watching. The weekly time frame, price is below the bottom of its weekly profile. Close below it last week. A second close would say, hey, at least go back and revisit the lows out there. So those lows, so Satish, Satish, one place to look at will be the lows from October 5th. That low went from 126.01 to 129.16. It did volume of about 1.1 million. If it moves back in that level, tests it and rejects it with lighter volume, either the top or the bottom of that swing point out there, less than 1.1 million shares, that might be an entry area into this. I said might be. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, last month, the month before, and the month before that, three consecutive closes below the bottom of that profile, 135.11. So basically, if we take a look at just simply profile uh, information, Jazz Pharmaceuticals has got some big problems going on here, Satish, um, from a profile standpoint. Now let's go back and take a look at the white background chart, see what other Stevie signals we've got. So one of those signals is what? Price is also finding... Um, resistance at its oscillator and change line. No bottoming signal here just yet. So without a bottoming signal, very tough for me to tell you where it is to go ahead and take a trade here, other than what we looked at, which was that October 5th swing point. But with price trading below the oscillator and change line, below the uh, bottom of its daily profile, that's a reasonable thing to assume at this stage of the game. Let's look at the weekly chart out here. The weekly chart does show a nice road momentum indicator bottom. That was generated with a, a bull sash candle out here. And uh, what price was unable to do is get above the top of its profile. So this is also suggesting to us that price might pull back like we talked about earlier to test that swing point. And on the monthly time frame chart out here, what has Stevie got? Not much. This says that price could pull back to 103.46. So we got 103.46 as a possibility. We've got the lows, the prior lows out here, which would take us to 126.01. Uh, what I think we'd really want to do is, as price is moving down to those levels, is look to the short-term time frame charts and see if we can find some type of bottoming signal out there. But with price below the profile levels like we looked at, without seeing any kind of bottoming signal on the uh, daily time frame, I think with regard to jazz pharmaceuticals, you just need to be patient on this one. And again, the only thing that sticks out to me is the likelihood that price will go back and retest that swing point from October 5th. Now, I don't recall where Jazz Pharmaceuticals was in the waiting inside of the MJ, 
my recollection was it wasn't on my first page, as you know, uh, but but it was on my second page. And I just try to do things in weighted order out there. But if you are in an MJ, which is not, let's go take a look at MJ. I've been looked at it for a bit. Maybe I'm really off base here, and it's performing well. And what does Stevie know? But let's go take a look at the M. Well, I got to actually type in the correct symbol. So what we're about to experience here is: is there a MNJ symbol out there? And I think the answer is no. So let me see if I can actually type in MJ. There we go. We're talking, you know, Michael Jordan here. We should be able to type that in. There we go. So now let's go take a look at MJ just for the heck of it. Um, we're going to try to as soon as it populates here. So let's bring over. This is the alternative harvest ETF out here. Now, this generated yesterday, this generated a uh, Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom signal out here. But I would, you know, anybody trading below the profiles, kind of like we just looked at in Jazz Pharmaceuticals, although Jazz didn't have a bottoming signal out there. Uh, but uh, still below those uh, profile levels is a dangerous thing at this stage of the game. The monthly chart here, as we take a look at it, it negated, this is MJ, it negated its TD9 count bottom, and it did that last week. And this suggests that price is going to make its way back to the 1051 level. That is where it most recently broke out. Now, you can also see, though, it's oscillator and change line. This on a weekly basis change colors. So we should see price net level test each other at some point in time out here. If we take a look at the monthly chart, GWPH was pot-related research takeover by Jazz. Okay. But get this. I, thank you, Satish. Appreciate that. All that I'm saying, I, did, I wasn't aware of that, but just if you go pull up all of the instruments inside of MJ, there's a lot of stuff that you got to kind of to stretch to say, okay, that is uh, marijuana related out there. So I'm just sharing that information with you. I can tell you that when I put up the actual charts, I looked at it real closely and immediately sent out a uh, update to subscribers and said, you know, in essence, we didn't invest what I thought we were investing in. So you know, if we want to invest in uh, in the medical marijuana side, uh, maybe we'll just do individual stocks versus uh, MJ out there. So in any event, um, uh, that's, what, uh, that's what's going on. So I, I hope that that helps you out, and uh, it probably doesn't, but uh, I wish that I had more information for you. So no other questions in the queue. I don't believe I've got anything inside the Tiger's Den, but if you would like me to look at something, please go ahead and post that in there, and we'll be happy to do so. In the meantime... What do we want to go take a look at? Let me just take a quick look at this market update chart, see if there's anything worth uh, taking a look at. Okay, Dan wants to take a look at his favorite stock out there, S-A-V-A. -A. That is uh, Sava. And, uh, oh, geez, Louise, Stevie. Okay. Um, well, let me get it going on my three time frame charts. Apparently, I have Fat Finger Tuesday because every time I type something in, oh, I didn't even type it in correctly here. SVA. Hey, by the way, Dan, if you were wondering if you get tired trading SAVA, you can just go take a look at SVA. That's an instrument out here. But let's try to get to actual SAVA or CASAVA, which is the actual name, CASAVA Sciences. So a nice move today, Dan, and price is running right up into resistance. But you probably knew that. And resistance is the top of its daily profile. So if this thing is going to break out, change its trend, so to speak, you'll see it close above the top of that daily profile. And that's price at 53.27. And if you get that, look at 56.51 to be the next move. And above that, 74.01. But right now, Saba running right smack dab into those sellers right at the 53.27 level. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, 
is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. You got the uh, NASDAQ 139 points. The uh, composite is up just 15, relatively flat out there. But uh, I want to go ahead and take a look at the uh, DAX out here. DAX has been performing uh, pretty well. In fact, next to the U.S. markets, the German markets have been uh, performing, um, you know, not, 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 too, uh, not too bad out here. Now, what the DAX has done is it has generated an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. So I'm going to just show you what that looks like. And, and the NASDAQ and the DAX are somewhat correlated, uh, not for reasons that I understand. Stand, but they just simply are. So what I just simply wanted to share with you is we have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside inside of the DAX. Now, what price first needs to do is take out its all-time high, and that's going to take us back to August 13, 2021. So the next resistance level in the DAX is going to be at 16030. You're trading right now at 15,954. And if price can clear the 16,030 level, then what we're looking at is a move to 16,457, 16,719. And so the reason to share this with you is because when we take a look at the U.S. markets and the fact that they're moving higher out here and we're in that favorable seasonal cycle, we're just getting complimentary messages really across the uh, board out here. Uh, so, uh, and the FTSE, uh, the FTSE, let me uh, get that. That too has an A, well, it's A to B equals CD is not as large as the uh, DAX um, a pattern is, but uh and so back in, and so we, with regard to the NASDAQ, other than the consolidation breakout level out here, if we take a look at its four time frames, price is up above its daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly profiles out here. The only A to B equals CD pattern. Oh, oh, there is a new profile, okay, that is attempting to form. But I don't, if, if we close where we do, so I'll just expand this chart. So I've got Stevie's advanced Doppler tool on this uh, set. This is my my synthetic version of the uh, of the NQ so that I can stitch together a lot of daily information. And what it does is, one, it provides me with a lot of great profile information. Second, it uh, gives me the early warning indicator. So there's a new profile that's attempting to form in the NQ. Well, I won't have a confirmation on it until this evening, 6.01 to be exact, or just past 6, I should say. But right now, the top of that box is at 15.914, and price is trading above that level. We're trading at 15.938. So... Uh, several times during the day, this profile has shown up. If I hit my refresh button right now, what is the Subway commercial reset, refresh, or something like that? Um, when this populates, that profile probably isn't there. But it may form that was bullish in structure, and a reason to uh, to to bring that to your attention was to try. Yeah, so it's not there as we speak right now. But I do know that a new profile is attempting to form out here. But now, as I just simply I reduce this. We take a look at the daily, weekly, monthly time frames. You know, the question is, where is price headed to? And other than 
the consolidation measured moves. The only other thing that I would come up with, sure, sure there's large A to B equals CDs out here. It's just expansion of swing points out there. So Fibonacci expansion of swing points. So let me make sure I've got that. So if we take a look at the expansion, that would be from a, a high down to a low out here. So the low that we're looking at is the week of October 4th. So the 1.272 expansion of that is at uh, 16.063. 16063 and the 1.618 expansion inside the NQ. Let's pull this down. Is at 16525. So those would be additional levels on top of the consolidation measured move areas that you and I have taken a look at. But if we look at uh, just quickly here, just make sure in the Dow, the YM price above all profile levels inside the Russell 2000. Yeah, price is above all profiles except for the monthly which I think we took a look at, and that's up at the 2357.50 level. So a close above that is going to generate a bullish-type move out here. We have a request inside the Tiger's Den, and that is from uh, George in Tampa. He wants to take a look at J.P. Morgan. So absolutely. Let's go over to our three time frames out here, see what J.P.M. is doing. And J.P. Morgan right now trading out at uh, 170.65. 170.65 keeps it with inside its daily profile. The bottom of which is 165.02. This is this is a slightly bearish structured profile. So if price did close below 170.31, George would be signaling a potential move back to 165.02. Price is above the weekly and the uh, monthly profiles out there. So let's go see if we can see any kind of topping signals on Stevie's white background chart. So as we open this box up, we're looking at the daily time frame, and the daily time frame doesn't have anything, does not have a topping signal. What it does show us is that price is just consolidating, George, with inside that profile. Now, price is below that oscillator and change line. That's the green line of 170. 7109. The way that you would trade that is if there's a close above that, then that will tell you that uh, JP Morgan is going to go target the top of the daily profile, 172.96. As long as price remains below the oscillator and change line, that's a signal of a further retracement. Now, that retracement could be just back to the swing point out here from October 27th, or it could be a move down to the 165.02 level out there. And that's what the daily time frame chart is communicating to us. The weekly time frame chart shows that what? Uh, does not have a topping pattern. And price right now pulling back and testing support. That is the weekly oscillator and change line. So this continues to look good. So it's really all about the daily chart here. The monthly time frame chart for J.P. Morgan last month took out, negated its TD9 count top. So that is a bullish thing. So when we come back to J.P. Morgan. It's pretty simple out here. As we went through all those time frame charts there, George, it boils down to the weekly. And right now, the signals are kind of neutral, no topping pattern, but again, consolidating with inside that daily profile. So I hope that helps you out with regard to what J.P. Morgan is doing, the battlegrounds that you're going to watch for, because if price is able to overcome those battlegrounds, it's up, up, and away for J.P. Morgan. Uh, let me see if we've got any other requests out here going into, uh, we do not. So it's been a quiet day on the uh, phone lines. I believe I've taken care of everything inside the Tigers then. But please, folks, uh, we've got a couple minutes during this segment, a couple minutes during the last one. If you have something you want me to take a look at, more than happy to do so. Lights we crude. I know there's a lot of folks that are trading that, thinking that there might be a top in place out here. So let's just go take a look at the lights we crude charts out here. We'll do our four panel set of charts, give you a better view of lights we crude. And here what you can see now, I believe there is, well, I'm going to, I'm not, I'm not going to believe I'm going to give you the actual input, the actual answer um, momentarily. And that is what, what type of top, if any, is there for light sweet crude? So I just want to take a quick peek here on my daily time frame chart. And, uh, wow, are you kidding me? Yeah, so this had a Rhodes momentum indicator topping pattern uh, that formed. It was formed back here on the trading day of October 15th, but the bearish reversal candle, this is bearish sash candle, back on October 1st. That's why understanding these profiles is so important. Whenever you get a top signal or a bottom signal, in this case here is a top, all you're expecting is price to pull back to test support. If it breaks support, it tells us we might have a change in trend. In this case here, all Lights We Crew does what did was test support, 81.24, the bottom of that profile. Now all we have is a consolidation. So the signal here with price trading inside the uh, profile is really neutral. You got the valid top that's in place. Price is consolidating. You also have resistance. You can see there is a new weekly profile that formed, and that's up at 85.41. That's a resistance level. So in order for uh, lights we crude to be on its merry way to the upside, the actual level that it really needs to close above is going to be $90.86. And if we see that, that's going to be even more pain 
at the uh, pumps out there. But right now, you've just got a consolidation sideways. You can also see how price held its rising trend lines on the uh, daily time frame. Mike K wants to take a look at PPLT. I believe that is platinum. So let's get that up on the screen here just for a uh, moment before we go to breakout here. PPLT. P PPLT. I believe that's the ETF for platinum. And uh, right now, just uh, consolidating with inside its daily profile. Support at 96.40, resistance 99.29. Mike, when we get back to this break, we'll go look at platinum for you. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. We've got the January uh, Platinum Futures contract up on the screen here. This is for my K in the uh, Tiger's Den. And, uh, and, and here you can clearly see resistance. So you had the top of the daily profile. I had a nice wide-ranging bar yesterday. Remember we were looking at uh, Saba just a few minutes ago with uh, Dan. When taking a look at the uh, top of that profile, the importance of price really closing above that. Well, yesterday's close was 1068.30. Top of the profile, 1068. 30 cents on a $1,000 instrument is not exactly a break on. On top of that, look at all those descending trend lines that we've got there. Now, it doesn't mean that. It's just that is the battleground out here for platinum. Very clear. Support, it's got a rising trend line. Bullish structure daily profile. 
I don't know if inside PPLT, and Mike, I don't know what PPLT holds, if it holds the January future contract, if it holds something else, I just don't know. But with regard to platinum, really trading between support and resistance out here, it's in the cone of silence, so to speak. I know you also want to take a look at UNG, but really all we need to do is go back here to uh, our market update chart. And if you take a look at it, I'll just expand out the chart. So do we have a bottom signal as uh, the uh, natural gas, the December contract, was forming what appears to be a bottom? The answer is no. What we do have is a test of a prior swing point. That was a swing point from October 19th. But more important than that, we had a bullish structured profile. And a bullish structured profile tells us that the buyers reside between 519 and 531. What did price do yesterday? Came back and test that level. And now price is above that level, above the center of that profile, Mike, and that's at 531. So what we typically see when price can close above the center of a bullish structured profile is we typically see price make a move higher. That says UNG should continue to move higher. Where natural gas would be targeting is a $6.28 level. What does that relate to inside of, uh, of the UNG? I don't know. But really, you should always be paying attention to the contracts and maybe more than a December contract inside of the UNG. So you have to take a look at that as well. But uh, natural gas should continue higher based upon just simply holding that bullish structured profile. Folks, stay tuned. You've got two more great hours. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien, he'll take us on home. I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. Have a terrific Tuesday, folks.